My name is Representative Hannah Kane, for those of you who don't know me, and I welcome you all to our rededication of mile marker 43. Uh, honored to be here, and I see that we have Selectman Moe Apollo and Henry Fitzgerald here with us today, and uh, John Campbell from the Historic District Commission. Anyone I'm missing in terms of? I don't think so. Um, so Benjamin Franklin was appointed by the Continental Congress as the first Postmaster General in 1775, and he established a postal system that's still in existence today. My husband Jim and I live in the Old Pease Tavern. It's built in 1751, and it served as a hub of the stagecoach line operated by Levi Pease. Due to his punctuality and timeliness of delivery and dedication to the stage route between Boston and New Haven, the Pease Tavern served as one of our country's original post offices. So I'm very excited to be here today because I feel a very strong connection to this. Shrewsbury actually has two of the original Benjamin Franklin mile markers on the Boston Post Road, the second being at Dean Park entrance. By moving mile marker number 43 here today, we're keeping the marker on the historic Boston Post Road and a place where our monuments have been assembled together for our community to reflect on. It's important to note that the town common itself has not been static. The Civil War monument was erected in memory of the 29 men that lost their lives in the war with funds raised to build the monument raised by members of the Shrewsbury Rifle Company. The monument was toppled over during a severe ice storm and fell into a reservoir here that was used to supply water for fire protection before it was later restored. The bandstand, which is further up behind me here, uh, donated in the late 1800s by the King's Daughters, has been in at least two locations on the common, including being adjacent closer here to the Civil War monument. Two of our other monuments, the Shrewsbury Minutemen Memorial and the General, General Henry Knox Monument, have both been moved having originally been located on the other side of Route 140, closer to the original town hall. So it's fitting that we hold this dedication ceremony during the spirit of Shrewsbury, as the effort to move the historic artifact to a more prominent location where our community can appropriately appreciate it, this beacon of our country's history, is in line with our community's strong experience of reverent remembrance and reflection. The effort to undertake this move was originated and supported by a wonderful collection of Shrewsbury citizens, organizations, and state partners. And we owe our debt of gratitude to all of them. The first one I'd like to highlight is Bernie Folletta, who first noticed and brought to the attention of John Campbell at the Historic District Commission the poor and isolated location of the mile marker at the entrance to 290. Thank you, Bernie. The Historic District Commission support was joined by the Shrewsbury Board of Selectmen who approved the relocation to the Town Common, along with the First Congregational Church of Shrewsbury who supported us, that this would be a fitting location. The Mass Department of Transportation, who had been authorized by the Mass Legislature years ago to maintain and restore the markers, helped coordinate and fund the move, with the Historic District Commission and John Campbell serving as our local project coordinator. It's now my honor to introduce a few people to give brief remarks, and I'm going to start with someone who is historical as well, General Artemis Ward. Oh. Uh, thank you, Hannah. Uh, good morning, or I guess it's good afternoon now. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Franklin and I worked together, and when this was being uh, developed in the 18th century, he and I had a somewhat we're working relationship when he was in the Boston or Massachusetts area. I think it's very fitting that they relocate this to the center here of town uh, where the common, uh, the old church that uh, actually I was head of the building committee in 1766 when the church was built. Uh, there was a church here before but it was too small so they built that one. The Sumner House here, actually I built that and I gave it to uh, uh, the Reverend uh, Joseph Sumner as well, and actually my father was one of the founders of Shrewsbury, uh, Nahum Ward. Uh, this is a very historic place. It's very fitting that the marker be here, and uh, I'm glad to see so many tur people turn out so we can uh, uh, pay tribute. So thank you, Heather. Wonderful. Yep. It's a pleasure to follow in your footsteps at the State House, General Ward. Next, I would like to introduce Angela Snell from Parks and Recreation to say a few words. I'm happy to be here today as part of this um, dedication. I'm here on behalf of the Parks and Cemetery Commission. Um, we'd like to thank the Shrewsbury Historic District Commission, John Campbell, 
and the Mass DOT and everybody involved in the project um, for helping to preserve this piece of uh, Shrewsbury's history. Um, it's going to be a great way for more residents to come and learn about um, a piece of Shrewsbury's history now that it's here at the Common and will be here for years to enjoy. Thank you. Now I'd like to ask Mo DiPaolo on the Board of Selectmen, who was also in office when this was originally installed. Mo, would you join us, please? Thank you, Hannah. And uh, good morning. Yeah, and when this was originally done, we had to do it by hand, not with a crane like on this. So um, <clears throat> before I start, I just want to mention and thank the uh, employees of the Parks Department, who I know spent a lot of time up here the past couple of days getting this area prepared and, and getting the climate prepared. They did a great job, so thank you very much. Um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about the Post Road um, because there's so much history with that. The markers are part of the history of the Post Road. The first Post Road um, actually was started in 1673. It was authorized by King Charles II in 1672. He didn't specifically authorize the road. He authorized the colonies to do something to get good communication between the colonies. And that, that's how it started. The original path was from Manhattan to Boston. And it was called the Boston Post Road, and as we all know it. A lot of people think Route 20 completely was the Boston Post Road, and that, that's not correct. Parts of Route 20 are the Boston Post Road. As, the, as the, the road got more used and it became congested, different governments would move the road to a different place to be able to accommodate the traffic. The first mail delivery to Boston left Manhattan January 22nd of 1673, and it was delivered to Boston on February 5th, 1673, two and a half weeks just like it feels like when you're commuting into Boston in the morning to go to work. <clears throat> um, it was, the road was really put together and organized by um, two governors, Governor Winthrop and Governor Lovelace, who took the initiative to, to get the road going. And uh, again, they started in 1673. It had kind of a, a rocky history in between. There were Indian attacks and wars, there were other stuff. But it managed to stay intact. In 1751, Benjamin Franklin and William Hunter were authorized by the king to start a postal system and to, to do these postal routes. And um, William Hunter got from Pennsylvania south, and Benjamin Franklin got Pennsylvania north. And um, this was the first post road in North America. So this is a lot of history here. It doesn't get a lot of attention outside of New England, but it's a very historic path. Um, so anyways, um, you fast forward um, 1753, um, Ben Franklin uh, marked out the road, took 10 weeks, marked out the road, um, and that's how these mile markers got in. And then of course, after uh, the revolution, Continental Congress made Benjamin Franklin the head of the Postal Service, and the rest is history. So this all goes back to 1673. I mean, just think about it. I um, mean, there's still parts of it here. So it's really fitting that we have this in a prominent place and that we still have it and that we can uh, use it as a indicator of the history of this Commonwealth and of this country. So thank you very much. Great job, Mo. Uh, next, I'd like to ask John Campbell, the chairman of the Historic District Commission, to say a few words. Thank you, sure. Uh, boy, isn't this a great day that we finally have mile marker 43 back uh, in a very prominent place on our common? It'll be 250 years next year, 1767 to 2017, 250 years. So I'm just happy it's taken its place with the other more notable monuments on our common. A couple of brief thank yous. First, Bernie Folletta, who about a year ago, uh, where's Bernie? Bernie, oh, about a year ago, told me about this. And like most of you, I go by these a thousand and one times and never really noticed it. 
People have told me they go by the one at Dean Park, they never notice it. So the signs are really going to help. Uh, so Bernie, thank you for bringing it to our attention. And to Don Hutchins, who uh, was involved from the very beginning and did a lot of work with the signs and overseeing the uh, placement of the monument and that. So thank you, Don. Uh, the Shrewsbury Board of Selectmen, thank you for your support on this right away. We appreciate it. Uh, Mass DOT uh, for relocating it, and they paid for the relocation, and they also have restored the monument. When, when you see it in a few minutes, you're really going to appreciate it. Uh, special thanks to town manager uh, Dan Magado and Salco head Mike Hale, who helped find the funds for the signs. Dan, again, was very supportive of this move from the very beginning. Thank you to Angela Snow and her staff for the support they gave us on this. Um, and to Representative Hannah Kane, who was very supportive, including taking off time today, and told me, John, if you have any problem with Mass DOT at the Commonwealth, let me know. And uh, we didn't, so, uh, but she was there for us. And finally, to my fellow uh, Historic District Commission members, uh, Melanie Petrucci, Don Hutchins, Alan Taylor, Bob Cox, Henry Wood, and Chris Gustafson. Thank you for making this come to uh, a full circle and get it back where it belongs. So thank you all. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. Terrific remarks, everyone. Thank you so much. So. Um, before we go ahead and unveil this with the help of some of our Boy Scouts that are here, I just want to thank everyone once again and acknowledge that this truly is a great opportunity for everyone who lives in Shrewsbury to continue to have a strong appreciation of our history. Because if we don't have an appreciation of our history, we likely will make mistakes um, that we could have avoided. So encourage all of your kids, grandkids, um, friends to come up and take a look and to really understand what we are showing up here on our common is really our common history and it's an important bond that we all have so thank you to all of you who made today happen and if i could invite the boy scouts up to help us unveil the marker those people who are involved in moving the mile marker here to come up so we can get a group picture. So Dawn, Bernie, Angela, team, anyone from Parks and Recs who's here, selectmen. How am I forgetting? Come on up, guys. Artemis and Mrs. Ward, would you like to... Check it out. 